morning. Welcome bike to ranks that stank. We are going position by position inside the top 12, outside the top 20 guys that should be in, guys that should be out. Animal, Tony, no dimes. How you doing? Doing uh, pretty good. How you doing? Did you notice my like my shot when I did that? I knew exactly when to yell because of the the intro motion that you did. Good that's form. We, that's how we do. Yeah, listen, I played a little ball back in the day. We're finally coming into our Zone. First thing to uh, address for this week, weather. Weather is weathering this weekend, all right? So we're going to put a link down below for our favorite resource. Roto Grinders puts out an absolutely free sheet to go check out the weather situations game by game. There are a lot of weather implications that need to be factored into rankings, into your sit-start decisions, into the players that we're going to be talking about today. I thought you were going to drop a, the weather outside is weather. I thought about it, but I'm like, I feel like I've done that it's 200 overplayed. times. It's overplayed. overplayed. All right. Everything everything about weather is overplayed. All right. I Even bringing up weather makes me sick to my core. I mean, you look at all the totals across the games this week, and they're all chilling in like the mid-30s. Yeah. Chris Hansen's like have, the weather. Yeah. Chris Hansen's going to have nothing to do on red zone this week. Jags, Jets, 37 for tonight. Yeah, we got 40, 32 and a half, 35 and a half. That one's I think they're just not good teams, but yeah, the highest but, is I believe 48 of Kansas City Seattle. That's insane just considering where it was like 2 years ago, you know. Unders have been very very popular this season. Very money. It's been um it's been tough to adjust. Let's just leave, <laughs> yeah. it, let's just leave it at that. All right, let's dive into uh quarterbacks. Animal, take us away. All right, I got a guy here who it's a little controversial, Derek Carr. He's uh, ranked the QB 16 this week, but... Oh, yeah, sorry. To uh, For quarterbacks, we're taking guys that are outside of the top 12 that we think uh, are startable, that we think will finish inside the top 12, that we think don't stink. Yes, so... I, based on... Sorry. <laughs> based on expert consensus ranking. So we're looking at the rankings around the industry that Fantasy Pros put together, all your favorite people submit them, and then we are going to pick them apart. We're going to that, slander them. Yes, so these guys are currently being ranked outside of the top 12 as per ECR. We are going to rank them inside our top 12. You may continue. All right, Derek Carr ranked the QB 16 this week. Uh, pretty favor favorable matchup. Steelers give up the 11th most fantasy points to quarterbacks. He's thrown two or more touchdowns in six of his last seven games. I know his numbers were boosted a little bit from that uh, bullshit touchdown last week. He had a really bad game against the Rams the week before that. But this is a team that, believe it or not, still has a chance to make the playoffs. And until they are officially eliminated, look, they're going to, you know, hungry dog runs faster, whatever you want to use. I'm not out on Derek Carr just because, look, he's got Devonta Adams. He's still got great weapons there. Darren Waller's back now, too. And that doesn't even really excite me, honestly. I have it, no, I don't either. give a shit about I know about Hunter Renfro end. excites you guys. Used to. Yeah. Uh, it, did, <laughs> did, it did a week or two. For a know? short period Ren, of time. Renfro used to hit so hard. It's not now, anymore. Now he only gets hit hard. Yeah. yeah. He stays just, out of the game. I just think Derek Carr has a really good shot to actually finish as a, a QB1 this week. I think it's a favorable matchup. So He's been low-key good. Low-key consistent for a minute. I'm a little worried about the Steelers' defense overall. I feel like really low temperatures, that's where they start to ball. And with TJ Watt back, they're like a different team, you know? For sure. Yeah. I'm kind of out on Derek Carr, honestly. He gives me a bunch of bad vibes. We're out. Right, We're out. Listen, I'm not. I'm not saying no. Go start Derek Carr. You have to. I'm just saying if you if you need to, don't feel too bad about it. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna you know take some really low hanging fruit here and uh, take Tom Brady, who's ranked at quarterback 13. He's been. I mean, he's been also uh, kind of on that Derek Carr trajectory where he's had at least two touchdowns, at least 250 passing yards in four out of the last five games. Playing against Arizona, eighth most fantasy points to QBs. Uh, like any quarterback that's worth calling them a starter in the NFL is fucking steamrolled the Arizona Cardinals statistically. They're also going to be playing with Trace McSorley under center. I mean, I'd imagine Tampa Bay, uh, their running backs are going to eat, but they're probably going to have like 42 minutes out of the, the time of possession in this game. So I, I feel like Tom Brady might not get the volume, but this this feels like one of those efficient games where he just racks up 275 and three on like 29 attempts or yeah. something. Brett Ripon just went 21 for 26 against the Cardinals. So I need I say more? No. I feel like I, I agree with you. Tom Brady feels like a, a good start, but he also playing Tom Brady at this point feels like playing Jared Goff from a few years ago. Just feels gross. Tampa Bay's offenses look so bad. It does. I, I kind of, I, I liked what I saw out of them last week. We I are mean, getting into the, the witching hour of the season where yeah. Tom Brady turns it on. So it's not that hard to turn it on against. It just feels Trace like McSorley. Tom Brady. He'll have like ten or like eight to like twelve points for like the whole game. Then like the fourth quarter comes. Two and he'll touchdowns. Just, yeah, he'll yeah. tack on like an extra twelve for you, and he'll finish with like twenty one points. But yeah. all right, cool. I thought it was so hilarious that the Bucks put together one good half of football, and all of Twitter was like ready to ride him back. We're back, baby. But I, like fifteen weeks of being dog shit, no one wants to like say that they're not a good team. Bucks uh, plus three and a half was the only leg of my parlay that didn't hit. That was terrible. Damn. All right, I got. A real quarterback. We're talking about Derek Carr, Tom Brady. Let me tell you about Brock Purdy. He's here. 
he's him, all right? He's going up against the Washington Commanders. They have a pretty nice defense, but, you know, it's more on the run side of the football, right? They're more of a pass funnel. And look, he's got Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield. I think he gets a lot of dump offs. No Debo, but we still got Ayuk. We still got Kittle. Great, reliable weapons. He's had a good game against Tampa Bay. He had a good game against Seattle, and that's coming off an oblique injury. Yeah, Didn't even short practice week. short that was a short prior week. prior. Yeah, now yeah. he's now he's getting a long week, extra time to rest that oblique. And at this point, he's just Jimmy G with rushing upside. He's a great point guard of this offense. He's a good distributor. He feels very safe. And I think his upside is higher than expected. I think I think he can hit that like twenty low twenty range in total fantasy point scored. Thirty seven and a half point over under. All coming from the 49ers. All coming from Purdy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like you said, I think he's just a great like game manager with upside because he's got those weapons like C Mac and you know Ayuk and those guys that can Kittle, you know, a great blocking tight end that can actually Hell score yeah. touchdowns. All right, so out of these three guys, Brady's QB thirteen in the rankings, Purdy's fifteen and Derek Carr sixteen. Are you starting Carr out of those three? So I'm starting I'm starting Brady above those those three for sure. Um I'd probably start Purdy actually out of all of them. I might really? go Purdy too. Yeah. Sad. Carr's definitely last in that. Yeah, Carr's definitely that. last, for sure. Brady does have the best matchup, but you're in on Brady. You just can't admit it to yourself. I think right? like this probably. will be a big like four net Rashad White week. I think so too, but I also think they're probably just gonna catch nineteen passes each. Maybe. I think Purdy's rushing upside is kind of underrated. I don't think there's really much there. I think it's more of just the fact that he's got a lot of explosive weapons around him, and he doesn't need to do too much to do to get a lot. I mean, there was a situation last game against the Seahawks where they needed a clutch first down, and Shanahan calls the little I've got quarterback a, bootleg. I've got to ask. Um, ask. I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this without making you seem like a fucking asshole. But how do you see rushing upside? He has 15 rushes for three yards on the season. Yeah, it's, His totals are negative was, one, one, three, negative one, three, negative two. That's I guess I he looks like he. He's he's a mobile guy. He yeah, scrambles I mean, a lot. Like, that's like every like NFL quarterback that's been in the league, like come in the league in the last five to ten years. It's not like his season high in six games know. is three rushing yards. Like every NFL quarterback. So he's now, going for a for season yourself. high. Is he's mobile. going for a season high. <laughs> I'm going to guarantee a you career this week high he's in say. rushing yards. That's fair. Yeah, I just uh, I just I felt like that was how out, did he? Out wait, out you said he only had three. He had more than three last week. Like Kirk Cousins. Yeah, but he's been negative yards and shit before. Last that. week he had negative two yards on the season. On the on the, on game. the game, four r- rushes for negative two yards. Yes, bro, I watched that game with my eyes. He had a fucking he fucking. Yeah, he carry. Probably need to go to the <laughs> doctor to get your eyes checked or for something. For a first down, do you not remember when he reached the ball out for a first down and he slid and it was like kind of controversial because it was like, did he get the first or not? No, no. Do you think we are out here watching 49ers games? It was yeah. prime time. It was Thursday night. Yeah, fuck that. Thursday's barely prime time. Yeah, it's fake news. Yeah. Be honestly, All right, we've whatever. Way too we're much. Play Brock Purdy. Way too much Brock Purdy talk. <laughs> he's he's relevant. I'm he's Mr. Mr. Relevant. Let's start him on my running back position. <laughs> now that we have all these stats. All right, speaking of the running back position, Animal. Uh, guys that are outside of the top 20 ranks right now that you're in on this week. All right, I have Devin Singletary, RB29 right now. Look, this is a gross, windy game where the run game will be very important. I know Josh Allen will probably be involved. James Cook might be involved too. But Devin Singletary got he went back to 60% of the snaps last week. He had his usual standard 13 carries, which is basically what he's been getting all season. And uh, he just needs to get it in the end zone. And that's one of those things where with the Bills, there's always an opportunity for them to score. I'm not out on Devin Singletary. A lot of people were worried when James Cook came in. James Cook had five carries last week. Yeah, I, I could see this being a Singletary game. Uh, just the weather, sustained winds of 20 miles an hour, gusts of 35, temperature of 10 degrees, with a feel of yeah. negative 10 degrees. It's just a run game all over it. Yeah, 100%. Um, I like that call with Devin Singletary. Uh, I'll jump in here. I'm going to go with Latavius Murray as my running back to play this week. He is rated as the RB24, right on that borderline of an RB2. But last week against the Cardinals, very bad defense, but he did have 24 carries, 130 yards, a catch with an extra 12, and a touchdown. He's just the guy in the backfield for the Broncos. They really don't shift anybody in. He gets a ton of work. He's going up against the Rams this week, who just let up 19 points to Aaron Jones, 21 to A.J. Dillon in the same game. Murray should have all the opportunity. We know the Broncos are trying to run the ball because they don't trust Wilson. They don't trust Rippon. They don't have a well, quarterback. Latavius Murray should just be their quarterback at this point. You need to stop. With what? To slander on Brett Rippon. It's not slander. It's truth. You can slander Russ Wilson all you want. And I, I, I like the Latavius Murray here, actually. I liked him last week. I think he's becoming a, a big part of the offense, actually. That yeah. backfield, bro. Latavius Murray, Marlon Mack, like... It's, Five years ago, you would have been like, damn, that's oh, yeah. elite. Now you're just like, damn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All 
But yeah, I mean, in, in recent <coughs> weeks, we've also seen him get carries of totals of 17, 13, 17, only eight against Kansas City. I think Kansas City kind of just makes you play that type of, you know, aired out game. But they were down I, a lot. Yeah. I like Murray a lot. He, yeah, the volume's there. He doesn't look like the 32 year old washed up running back that he actually is. I mean, he's not going to bust off a 50 yard touchdown run for you, but he might get, you know, a lot of goal line carries. He'll if get they there via volume. The, if they make it to the goal line. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Want to go inside now? Yeah. Should I start off? Is that sure. why you're asking me? I was just asking if we were ready to go inside. I'm ready to go anywhere. All right. I'll go anywhere with the animal. Go all inside, right. outside. I'm going to go bold with you here. I'm going to say that Nick Chubb has a bad game. We want to talk about bad vibes. Nick Chubb is coming off games of 10 points, 7 points, 8 points, finishing as the RB 32, 29, 32. Ever since Deshaun Watson's been back, Nick Chubb's game has just gone out the window. He's also missing practice now, so he might be hobbled with an injury. He's got a foot injury. Yeah, you think that the weather in Cleveland, because of how bad it's going to be, would be conducive of, like, Nick Chubb just getting the rock all day? But, I mean, it hasn't really been that different in this in this last month. It's not like his touches have been limited, and he's still not really producing. I don't know. I, Saints defense ain't bad. I I just have bad vibes about Nick I don't Nick hate Chubb. it. The injury is what really does it for me is I worry about the foot thing. Like, a foot injury on a running back is never a good thing. Probably um, going to have to play through it. Cleveland needs play to a make little, a playoff push. Play a little devil's advocate. I think the past couple weeks they've been trying to get Deshaun in some type of a rhythm, so he's just been throwing it more and like just kind of ignoring the run game. There's going to be a big run game. Yeah, I think this is a, this is a big run week, and I don't know if the foot's going to hold up. Then I love him. If it, you know, that's my only my only issue is the foot. Really, honestly, the, the matchup and the, the it'll be run centric, but it also could just end up being like an eight. Like the Browns could score eight points. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. be surprised by that. Yeah, you could it, get like I, fourteen I carries like, for twenty five yards. I feel like it's going to be pretty similar to what they just played against Baltimore, like thirteen three game. Yeah, I can see that. It's going to be hard for him to find the end zone in such a low scoring game. And I think my biggest thing is like his his work has been there, but the efficiency hasn't. Yeah. yeah. So basically, this is the second week in a row that we slandered Nick Chubb while also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Promoting <laughs> a side helmet of Nick Chubb. Uh, I love this classic Browns look. Uh, it's like a shiny kind of matte finish, I guess you could say. I don't, you don't usually see them rocking this helmet, but this is beautiful. Will look beautiful in your man cave, your woman cave, whatever you got going on, whatever fucking cave, this will look good in it. Courtesy of Pristine Auction. Okay. So if you go to Pristine Auction, link right down below. And use promo code BDGE if it's your first time on there. You don't actually have to purchase anything. But if you throw that code in, you're automatically entered into the raffle for this free giveaway of the Nick Chubb signed helmet. You're also going to get $10 towards your first raffle if you use that code. So if you decide, you know, you also hate Nick Chubb and you want to fade that and go with another player, another team, another object, helmet, gloves, football, doesn't matter. They have everything on there. They have auctions for extremely cheap prices and even cheaper because you're getting $10 towards that auction with code BDGE. Enter the raffle. Go get $10. Pristine auction. Thank you. And thank you all for signing up. Yeah, Nick Chubb going for a buck twenty and three tugs now. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you who's not doing that. Uh, Joe Mixon is the RB thirteen on the week, and I believe you could probably quote me on this, but I think last week or maybe even two weeks ago, I was like, "There's the most obvious upcoming stretch of games that Joe Mixon's going to average like yeah. three point four yards per carry." In started off last week one point nine yards per carry against Gang Green. Guy so goes, "You were super wrong. You, you were way off." You're right. Oh, yeah, I gave him way too much credit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 11 for 21 on the ground. He plays New England this week. The third fewest fantasy points allowed to running backs on the year. They've allowed the single fewest rushing touchdowns to running backs. They've Guess how many running uh, running back touchdowns they've, they've given up this year through 14 games? I'm going to say six. Three. 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 Oh, I feel Damn. like you're cheating. I'm not. Look, you can look. Whatever. That's you so just, low. You've been putting in the work. Yeah, I mean, like, he's also not really the workhorse right now in terms of snaps like the last two weeks he's played 58 percent and 64 percent of the snaps so it's a it's a clear split with Samaji right now even if like the touches and opportunities kind of went towards Mixon last week he's not the 80 percent guy that he was in the beginning of the season so tough matchup tough stretch uh just a little bit of a split carry there Mixon's more of like a a, a low-end RB2 for me this week, despite, like, the workhorse, you know, vision we have in our head of him. Uh, yes, another running back that is inside the, you know, top 12 is, I believe, what we went with top 12, right? Running backs? Where did we go? We go with top 20. Top but 20. Oh. But oh, your guy's in the top My guy's 12? inside. That's right. My guy's inside the top 12. He's actually inside the top 10. He's number 10. It's Ramondre Stevenson. Bengals run defense is pretty stingy. They're top 10 versus fantasy running backs. Number 10 to be exact. Look, here's the deal with Ramondre. I don't know. He's hurt. He's not hurt. I'm not trusting him to give me an RB1 performance this week. He had a monster game last week. He played only 66% of the snaps. Still had a monster game somehow. Is Damian Harris back? 
I don't know. Mixon went 11 for 21 against the Bucks last week. McCaffrey went off against them, but McCaffrey's in his own field. And then you got the Saints uh, absolutely got stuffed. Kamara 12 for 26. Ingram 7 for 27. So this is just one of those games where I think the Bengals defense is going to uh, kind of shut down the run game here. And you're going to see a lot of Mac Jones throws, sloppy throws, but a lot of Mac Jones throws. Oh, cool. I Coming think it's pretty uh, spicy too. 19 for 172 and one <laughs> on the ground. Yeah. Can't wait to see how this plays out for you. He's Look, due for I'm, a stinker. I'm just saying, I don't I don't see him giving you an RB1 performance. He's ranked as a top 10 running back. I don't see him finishing like that. I could see him finishing top 20, but I just don't know the exact usage. Last week was so weird. In what way? He dominated. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to play, and I, then he's out there getting... I think they were basically just like, all right, he's banged up. Let's try these other guys. Ramondre got into the field, and they're like, even a 70% Ramondre is like 170% production-wise of what these other fucking guys are. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if Harris is back this week, like, he had 66% of the snaps last week. If Harris plays, like, maybe he, that goes down to 40, and then, you know, we just... No way. He doesn't go backwards. Uh, if I, anything, I, Harris is the guy that'll probably get, like, 20% of snaps. I, I think the Patriots just deep fake the Raiders. They were like, oh, don't worry about Ramondre. He's hurt. He's got not going to play. on all of us. They got everybody. Uh, it, was, it was very smart by the Patriots. All right, yeah, so Ramondre... Get the fuck out. Is that the running backs? That's yep. my running back. That's all the running That's backs. all of them. Wide Lissy Vales. Animal? I'll start us off. We'll start with snake content. Sure. Snake draft. Yeah, I like formula. that. Formula. I can handle that. All right, I'm going to start uh, with a guy that, you know, we were supposed to go outside top 24 wide receivers. I went just on the nose there. I got wide receiver number 24, Michael Pittman. 10 for 60 last week. Very weird game, obviously. We know what happened with the, the Vikings and the Colts last week. Uh, but here's the deal. There's a new little wrinkle with the Colts. Nick Foles is starting. And I'm just expecting him to lean on his best receiver. Like, he's going to come out there. No Jonathan Taylor. He can't rely on the run game. He's going to lean on his best receiver. His best receiver is Michael Pittman. He's always got potential to have a great game. Chargers give up 10th most receiving touchdowns to our receivers. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say Pittman might get a touchdown this week. I like it. I'm a little scared just of Nick Foles being under center. Yeah, I think his floor is super low. But I he... It feels it does feel like an upgrade for Matt Ryan. Yeah, I mean, maybe he, he went ten for sixty last week. That means all those fucking throws were like five yard, seven yard throws. They were Wait, what? damn near oh, all oh, screens. I thought you meant Matt Ryan. Like, no, went ten for sixty <laughs> completion <laughs> attempt. I was like, what? No, Michael Pittman. Go. You know, ten for sixty. You get ten catches. You figure you're over. 100 yeah, I mean yards. that that's like their offense. So their offense is everything at the line of scrimmage. And I'm never, hoping yeah. with no run game to lean on. Now they're just gonna be throwing it. Maybe Nick Foles. You know, he's got a big arm. I feel like Nick Foles is gonna go like one seventy two touchdowns, both to Mo Alley Cox. No, it's kind of interesting, though, is that when uh, Jonathan Taylor went down, Michael Pittman got two carries for 30. He might be their most efficient running back they got. And you're getting a running back out of this. (laughs) He's the new Cordy P. He's the younger, better Cordy P. Let's just say it how it is. No such thing. shit on this puck. All right. In all seriousness, (laughs) DJ Moore is a guy that I'm looking to get into. You know how to snake? We both got DJs. No, I like it. Go. This is the order it is. I'm the middle guy, aren't I? Next to the middle. You're guy. not, oh, but it's fine. No, no, no. Okay. If you want to step in, <laughs> I'm going to work in. on our segues. Step- <laughs> at least we have a segue now, which is yeah, wrong you know time. What? You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't cool me off. I'm hot right now. All right. The Lions, the team that DJ Moore is playing, they're number two in the most fantasy points allowed to opposing wide receivers. 11 receivers in the last five games have scored at least 13 PPR points against them. Moore is coming off back to back good games outside of the one game against Seattle where he left early. Didn't really play that one, but 16 against Pittsburgh. 18 against Denver, two very tough defenses DJ Moore did well in. I think Sam Darnold does just enough to keep DJ Moore relevant. I think that's been the problem throughout DJ Moore's careers. He really has shit quarterback play tied to his name throughout his career. But um, look, I I don't know. I bought I bought into Sam Darnold. He he lied to me. I thought he was decent. He's not, but he's serviceable. Take your birth control animal. Look, against against his Lions defense, or sorry, Lions offense, we know is going to score points. That's just what they do. They're they're a great offense. They get teams into full-on shootout modes. Carolina wants to run the ball. Don't know how successful they're going to be because, like we mentioned, this Lions defense against the run is legit. I'm ready to come around and say it. It's been killing me to say I don't want to admit that it's true, but... It's true. So I think Sam Darnold's going to have a lot of attempts. DJ Moore is his guy. Lions secondary stinks. This is your way of of coming, of doubling down on, yes. on uh, yeah, the you, Panthers without actually yeah. having to take the whole team at right, once. Right, right, right. I, it was, I went from, like, loving Steve Wilkes and this Panthers team to, I was just like, all right, never mind, just DJ Moore. <laughs> Half of Sam Darnold, but just DJ Moore. All right, stick with the DJ theme. I like DJ Chark a lot at wide receiver 46. I think I called my shot a couple weeks ago. But over the last seven weeks, the Jets have allowed three wide receivers to score over eight and a half fantasy points. It was Justin Jefferson, Stephon Diggs, and Amon Ross St. Brown. Like, if you are not an elite receiver, you're not scoring fantasy points against the New York Jets secondary. Like, you're not physically allowed to do it. But now that they're not playing the Jets, 
They have a nice matchup against your shit Carolina Panthers, 10th most fantasy points allowed to the wide receiver position. And Chark before this last game, was he was red hot. 5 for 98, 6 for 94 and a touchdown. Drop off last week was more Jets than the actual role. You know, you might think maybe Jameson Williams getting more involved. Not the case. He's been under 20% of the snaps in each week that he's played um, with the line so far. So they are, like, easing the shit out of him into this offense. I don't think Williams really takes a bigger role until, you know, another three, four weeks into this. If they make a playoff run, maybe they start to utilize him a little more. But as far as I'm concerned right now, it's DJ Chark. As the number two, he's a downfield guy. I think they're going to take some shots against Carolina, so I'm uh, I'm in on DJ Chark. I like it. Can we go dumpster diving real quick on some wide receivers that we like? You're a dirty they're, boy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these guys are way down the rankings. There's probably not a lot of situations where you're in a position to play them. But, you know, sometimes you get desperate. Injuries happen. Stuff like that. How do we feel about K.J. Osborne, who's coming off a game with 16 targets, 10 receptions. Obviously, the Vikings were down 33 nothing at half, had to make the, the biggest and most historical comeback in NFL history. But it kind of feels like he's becoming more of a trusted receiver, at least in these last two weeks. I, there's something about him that makes me think he's taken that like number two spot from Adam Thielen. With that being said, I also do think Adam Thielen's a nice play just because Giants' pass defense isn't that great. Vikings force a lot of shootouts. This is one of the few games that's inside, so not going to be affected by weather. Like, like a guy like Drake London. I really like Drake London because he's been getting like all the targets. and all 85% the- of his quarterback's targets. Right. You like Saquon this week? Yeah. Would yeah. You like I him mean, as I, you're wait, doing. We're, 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 we're going <laughs> to fucking do this again? Anyways. Yeah, KJ, he had a weird week last week, obviously, with the, you know, the comeback getting a ton and ton of targets. But Jefferson also kind of like left that game with, um, I don't know what it was, but he was kind of in and out. Osborne's intriguing. I think he's probably a better option than the guys that you'll find him in the rankings around. He feels a lot like fool's gold, though. Like, I've, we've been through these pockets in his career where I feel like we've gotten excited about him, and then he's basically just, like, proven us right about not being excited about yeah, him. That's Goes fair. through these crazy stretches of just, like, not being involved, and they just have— like, That was so game script involved. Like, like the Kirk fact threw that the ball, like, 60 times. Yeah. It feels like you have uh, so many clear, like Cook. This, this week feels like a big Cook week against the Giants run defense. That's terrible. Cook, Hawkinson, just like you have a lot of clear playmakers that are like way ahead of him on the pecking order. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess like a five for 70 game, maybe a touchdown could definitely happen, but I, uh, does, um, I'm hesitant. Does Jahan Dotson's performance against the Giants being like the number two receiver in his offense kind of swayed you a little bit on KJ Osborne, or you don't really take that in consideration? I think it's a big Cook game. Big on Cook. Big Cook, maybe Hawkins. <laughs> Nothing else matters. Down. No other players. Just Cook. <laughs> maybe right. maybe Fuck Hawkins. John Dotson, <laughs> Dallin yeah. Cook. All right. Uh, one, one more. I think Dotson's just Sorry. talented on a week-to-week basis. He'll have those upside games. Yeah. All right. One more. Marquise Goodwin. Tyler Lockett doesn't look to be playing. Going up against Kansas City, highest total on the slate. He kind of fits that Tyler Lockett role. He was kind of he was a guy I was looking at. Again, it's tough though because like like how down bad at receiver do you have to be to like actually play Marquise yeah, Goodwin? Like who are you gonna actually start him over? I don't know, but he. I, just, I, just I think feel it's like a good. I think he's a good start. Right. I think it, he's it, not it, bad. Yeah. That the weather there is something something to take note of too. Single digits with ten mile per hour wind. So. Um, more of like a sucks if you're a fan, maybe won't impact the game. But if the wind picks up a little bit, could, like he's a he's a deep ball guy. Yeah. So it's like, it, I mean, the floor is obviously super low, but if he does connect, he's going to have a f- super fucking big game for you, which is kind of cool. I, I like Goodwin. I feel like he showed this year that he can fill in for one of the two guys if they get hurt like halfway through the game or whatever. What about uh, Marquis Goodwin or George Pickens? Oh, uh, Pickett's back. They're playing against the Raiders, right? Yeah. Yes. I do kind of like that Pickett to Pickens connection. And uh, I believe Deontay Johnson was banged up. I don't know if he's going to – I'm sure he's going to play probably. He is kind of questionable, I think. Is he really? Like actually questionable? It's, or just like li- technically, know. literally questionable? He feels like one of those guys who's always just technically questionable. He you was know. like – the. La- I feel like he's been good this year, but the last few years he's been on the injury report like fucking every single week. Yeah. I mean, with no Deontay Johnson, you're firing up Pickens easily. I think he's fine. He's going to play. Yeah. I, I actually think I might lean Goodwin there over Pickens. Pickens is like feels like someone that should have high upside games, but he just like never actually does he's been bad lately obviously like Kenny Pickett got her and then Tr- Trubisky came in and you just, the whole quarterback s- situation has been terrible there but yeah both guys operate on super low volume I got an interesting one here because this is a guy that I almost actually put on my list but Joshua Palmer or Marquise Goodwin nah I'm out on Palmer Goodwin really he's getting like 50 yards every week he just needs to get a touchdown he's like four for 50 every week I, I just think the upside of Goodwin way outweighs anything Palmer's doing. Yeah, I'll take good one there, too. All right, respect. <laughs> respect, brother. Uh, let's talk about some tight ends that we have respect for. I got one uh, one wide receiver for the inside. 
Did we do yeah, our yeah, inside? Oh, I didn't we do have mine either. We have to yeah. slander some wide receivers. You did, didn't you? No, I no, did no. Uh, oh. outside. You skipped me. Someone skipped me. Tony's just been rattling off. <laughs> no, Tony's, wait, you talked Tony's to gone into fucking three wide receivers before I, I, I did. No, you're right. I did. I did. Yeah. The skip was way before. Yeah. Um, all right. Inside the uh, top 24 that i just not really feeling this week. I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins here, the wide receiver 13. I just think, look, DeAndre's great, but wide receiver 13 feels really high this week, especially with Trace McSorley being the starter. This is really more of a bet against Trace McSorley right now. Bucks are top 15 versus quarterbacks. Uh, They've not been giving up a lot of points to wide receivers. Last week versus the Bengals, definitely inflated those numbers a little bit, but overall, they've been pretty good at shutting down wide receivers. DeAndre Hopkins has back-to-back seven uh, reception games, but no touchdowns. So, you know, seven for 60, that's not going to give you a wide receiver one uh performance there so yeah Yeah. this is a guy that i had on my list to go slander i i I pulled him off at the last second though because it just feels like his floor is still nice getting double digit targets back to back weeks again coming from mcsorley probably doesn't mean a whole lot but is there any situation where you're benching deandre hopkins no i'm not benching him but like i got him as my wide receiver 20 for the week so there's like i was gonna say 13 wide receiver 13 super aggressive there's no way he's a wide receiver one to slandre hopkins get him (laughs) get him (laughs) but yeah i mean you're probably throwing him in the flex very unenthusiastic he's a flex play that you fucking want to kill yourself for i mean i'm starting this week in one of my playoff leagues like so yeah i just don't feel great about it but i have to it's him it's actually him or george pickens you kind of have to go i mean i was out of principle exactly and that's who i have in there so yeah um i'm a little i'm a little bit worried about terry mclaurin this week against san francisco just at san fran it's kind of just going off the matchup there it's just a a team that absolutely shuts down leading wide receivers um, so Terry makes me a little nervous. We've seen some Jahan Dotson magic lately. So it's like maybe they try to get their secondary pieces a little bit more involved. But I'm it, this doesn't feel like a game that Washington scores a lot of points in. And Terry in those games ends up being like a, you know, five for 60 type of guy. And that's fine. But like as wide receiver, wherever he's ranked right now, like 13, 14, I'm kind of out on that. Yeah. I mean, he had uh, what was his line against the Giants last week? Seven or six for 70. Mm-hmm. You have to imagine against the Niners defense, there's just going to be Less of a run game for Washington. More pressure against Heineke. Yeah. He's it, another one that, like, I feel like if he doesn't get a touchdown, he's not going to have – he's not going to give you a great week. Yeah. Going from home now onto the road. Not I bad got, weather, at least. I can see least, the 49ers but. defense just getting after Heineke where the point where he's just making bad throws. And, like, I can see Terry McLaurin having, like, seven targets and, like, three of them were catchable. Yeah. I, I think Ron Rivera is going to consider putting Carson Wentz in after this poor Heineke performance. Really? QB1. It happened. He, QB1. Niner, <laughs> <laughs> Niners do that to people. Niners got Matt Rule fired. Not that he should have even had a job. Matt in the first Rule place. got Matt Rule fired. Yeah, that's bro. probably true. That's probably more true. I feel like that he's so over Carson Wentz. Like I, I put the percentage of that. I so. think the world is. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's it's more of like a Heineke. You can't be doing what you're doing type of benching. Not yeah. like I want Wentz to have a spark plug for us. Maybe Sam Howell. That I would like to see. I would too for my dynasty roster. That's going to sure. be like once they're officially eliminated and they'll be like, hey, let's give Sam the last yeah, two that's games. Very, that's true. Shit. They they got to be out out. Yeah, it's crazy how bad the rookie quarterbacks are this year. They yeah. all look so bad. Yeah, it's gross. So uh, before recording, I had Hopkins as my guy. You had McLaurin, and I was like, I could go either way with it. So you take your pick, and you took Hopkins, then you take McLaurin. So I'm making a quick pivot here. It's another week, and I'm going to do it again. I'm slandering Mike Evans. Nine targets last week, which has been good to see, but only five for 83, 11 half-point PPR points, wide receiver 32, just all season. Hasn't been getting done. Still ranked as the wide receiver. That was receiver the wide receiver 32, that performance. Yeah. Damn. I know. He, he's just, he doesn't get used in the red touchdowns. zone. He doesn't get touchdowns. Wide receiver 19, aggressive, egregious, outlandish. Why? I don't know. I'd rather play Juju <laughs> over him. I'd rather play Devonta Smith, DJ Moore, Michael Pittman, Jerry Judy. He uh, just doesn't feel like he has upside. And like we said before, I think this could be like a Rashad White, uh, you know, Leonard Fournette week. So, like, there goes the touchdowns. And what's he going to do? He's going to give me four for uh, 50, four for 55. Like, that's, yeah. that's not in, what I I'm need. I'm in on Evans this week. Really? I like him. Yeah. You mean that for real? For serious? real, for real. Yeah. I like I, uh, I, well, I like Brady this week. Like I said, I, yeah. I, I'm I'm on Brady. The running backs I think are fine. I think they'll get their touches, but I feel like Brady's going to be hyper efficient. And um, but at this point, I feel like Brady can be efficient without Mike Evans. Yeah, like well, Mike just, Evans just I just is, think he's going to be the yeah, guy. He's going to be efficient with Mike Evans. He's yeah. taken an exit out of this offense. It's Godwin. You can say Kate Otten will probably have a big game against Arizona, who's egregious against tight no ends. Chance. No chance. Kate Otten stinks. Well, let's, yeah, but any let's get tight something end clear. Every tight end stands right tight now. End. That's oh, fine. that's not every, where I thought you were going. <laughs> oh. They're saying every tight end eats against Arizona. Oh, yeah, that is true. But every tight end stinks right now. Um, here's a guy, though, that I think stinks a little bit less than some of the others. Do it to him. Jawan Johnson ranked tight end 16 while also having the second most receiving touchdowns out of any tight ends 
in the league. Travis Kelsey, the only guy ahead of him. Jawan Johnson has seven touchdowns on the season. Look, it's a gross game. The weather's going to be gross in Cleveland, but you would assume there's going to be a lot of running, maybe get close to the goal line, and maybe throw a little two-yard, three-yard pass to Jawan Johnson, because that's where he eats. He eats in the red zone. He's a touchdown scorer, and it's the tight end position where if you don't have Travis Kelsey, you're looking for someone to start. Jawan Johnson, probably available. Andy Dalton getting his ass bench this week. Yeah, I'm a little nervous sure. about Jawan. I mean, obviously, I mean, he's, he, he's very touchdown reliant, and he gets it almost like every week. It feels like playing roulette, but like seven or like three quarters of the board is whatever you're betting on. Yeah, I, I just feel like there's not a lot of points scored. I don't know. Except Jawan for the touchdown Johnson. thrown to Jawan Johnson. Yeah, it's probably seven nothing game. Saints taking it. So we talked about like the pickings to pick it corollary. Uh, I kind of like Pat Fryermuth while Kenny Pickett is under center. He is the tight end nine right now, and I think he should be a little bit above them because the guys that are that are above him right now really haven't done a fucking thing this year. Uh, with Pickett under center, Pat Fry is averaging four point six catches, six point six targets, and fifty three receiving yards. Yeah, so that's like double digit PPR fantasy points per game. Hasn't scored in a single game of those, which is what comes along with Kenny Pickett and that quarterback situation. But like those numbers are. You, you throw a couple touchdowns here or there, like those numbers are, are really, really Tight good. Tight end premium league too, maybe. You get a little extra boost for some of those catches. Yeah, LV bottom 10 against uh, opposing tight ends and fantasy points allowed. So I, I like I like Big Pat to come he, back. He feels week. like he goes like four for 73 every week with Pickett. I would feel good about that. Yeah. I feel great about that. Way better than just John Steen. I mean, four for 73 is like the same points as a touchdown, basically. Yeah. I mean, you know who's been getting involved, getting those receptions, getting that work, being brought back into this offense is Dawson Knox. Last two weeks, he has eight targets, seven targets, six receptions, four receptions. He went off against Miami. Miami's a terrible pass defense, so I think a lot of people were expecting big games out of him. But back-to-back double-digit points, back-to-back weeks finishing as the tight end four. Now he goes up against Chicago. We know Chicago bleeds points to everybody. Eh, The weather ain't great. The total's down at 40, so maybe that's a little bit of a hindrance. That scares me a little bit. Yeah, it definitely does. But I, if Dawson Knox is getting worked back into this offense, I'm going to be really hyped about him. I mean, the offseason was a long time ago. <laughs> but he, he was also one of those guys talked up where it was like, you know, if you're connected to Josh Allen and you're going to get, you know, upwards of seven targets, upwards of four receptions, like you're going to be really valuable. There's a decent chance he's chilling on your waiver wire. He's, just, he's got more upside than most of the other tight ends that you might want might have to start. So I, I can see why you'd say like, yeah. He's also. Would you rather start him than Jawan Johnson? Yeah, I mean, last yeah. last three weeks he has 88 percent route run rate, and he also has the highest target per route run rate on the team. So I don't know. Chicago's sneaky good defense against tight ends, though. So I will say they're. Uh, 30th in points allowed to the fantasy tight end, which is a little bit scary, but I do, I do think Knox on a weekly basis has some good fucking upside, though. I, I throw him in my lineup. Juwan Johnson over him this week. I'm picking my spot here with Knox. You taking Juwan over Knox? Yeah. What about you? I would definitely take Knox. Okay. <laughs> Idiots. Juwan Johnson and fucking... Juwan Johnson just gets 12 points every week. 30 <laughs> degree weather. 12 points. Andy Dalton's not even going to complete 12 passes. Doesn't matter. He's going to complete two to Juwan Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. One's That's a right. touchdown, one's for nine yards. That's there it. you go. All right. That's a wrap for the ep. That's it, sir. All right, so what we need you to do is hit the button that looks like this, and then while you're down there, go click the first link in the description that says Pristine Auction. Sign up with our code BDGE. That'll put you into the raffle for the signed Nick Chubb helmet. Don't even got to pay for it, but go browse the other auctions on there, and you can go pay for something at a very discounted price. Uh, That's what we got for week 16. Ranks that stank. We will be bike here next Friday, same time. Love you. Goodbye.